once I get this off, there we go. Can we be there? Crazy, crazy tools other than some of these little special controllers. Thought I'm not so strange. Said you never knew. I'm gonna be taking this whole thing apart. Well, I try my best to cover our there eyes. It's a common way to blame days. and hide the truth. I know that some will say, hey, it matters but little, babe. Oh, but come on, and mean it to me. I need it so bad. I needed to try and put shot first. I needed to fall. I needed your love. I'm bounding away. I need never get old. Ah. I'm taking our time, just standing in the rain. Meaning what you said, ah, and mean it to me. All these lies, and never again. Come on, and say it now, say it's a game. I know some will say, hey, it matters but little, babe. Oh, but come on, and mean it to me. I need it so bad. I mean it. Good morning. So, I've got the transmission mostly back in the vehicle. Now, unfortunately, my camera stopped recording while I was putting that part in, but I'm gonna show you my setup for how I did it by myself. I used my floor jack to kind of position it up. I put a piece of wood on there just to kind of keep things uh, somewhat level and slowly raised it up an inch at a time, a centimeter at a time, whatever unit of measurement that you like to use at a time. put a piece of wood across my uh, just above my motor here resting on these these weren't gonna be taking tons of weight but this was a safety precaution because I'm working by myself I got a heavy-duty tow strap I think this thing was rated for like 2,000 pounds or something crazy and wrap that around the transmission every time I jacked up the jack a little bit more I tightened this a little bit more until it slowly just kind of brought it up close to in place once I was able to line up, you know, my motor with the actual transmission, I just slowly start moving things towards each other until I was able to get the two top bolts in that hold it. There's one there and one over there. Down to the very bottom, underneath, there's a bolt there and a bolt up there. I was able to get those lined up. The trickiest part is just kind of slowly getting it in, but once it clicks, it clicks into place just fine if click is the right word. I did find that I had to keep the trip, the whole motor raised up just a little bit. So I got a block of wood there just in case. I have a floor jack here just in case because I only have one jack to kind of go back and forth between the two. After I did that, I started reattaching my motor mounts. I've got all my bolts organized in baggies. My motor mounts are just slowly starting to get finger tightened in. Right now the transmission is not torqued at all. It's all still just finger tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up the uh, camera on a tripod and just kind of time lapse this since I'm basically just uh, doing the reverse of what I did when I took it all out. Let's hope everything fits back together and there's no extra pieces. Thank you. 
All right, there's two bolts here on the back side. This is closer to the firewall. Two of those bolts, they got a 14 mil head. I'm gonna torque those up now. Don't have a whole lot of clearance, so just a little click at a time. <laughs> How did I get this off the first time? <laughs> Six bolts tightened. The last two are gonna be for the starter. My next step is engine mounts. I've got three engine mounts, front, back, and by the side where the battery's gonna go. Okay, I wanna start by getting that saddle piece to fit through. Right now my transmission's a little lower than it needs to be, so I'm gonna have to jack it up a little bit. I'm gonna move, uh, I think I'm just gonna finger tight in a couple of these bolts and then raise it up until it fits. Finger tight-ish. Not torqued. <laughs> okay, I gotta come up about two centimeters, an inch, something like that. Do a little bit, check. A little bit more. I like to put a little bit of anti-seize. Here's my saddle, I've got it lined up perfectly. <laughs> I think that never happens. <laughs> Put on the nut on the other side of that big long bolt there. And I'm not gonna release the uh, jack yet. I wanna get everything uh, in first. Just finger tight for now. There's four bolts that hold this mount to the actual body of the car. And there's three bolts that were holding the other side of the engine mount uh, to the transmission. And then the big one in between. And the one engine mount that really sucks to do is the one at the back. I kind of have to do it blind. There's three bolts that attach to the back of the tranny. And they're, <laughs> they're definitely a pain to get to. Uh, I can't get a torque wrench down there for those two. So I just go as tight as I can. This top one, I can definitely torque those down though. Those are not moving. Okay, I got those ones on the side now. That one's in. Let's do the front one. There's two bolts that attach it to the transmission. This is for the front. And there's two bolts that come up from underneath that cross member that hold it from underneath. This finger tight because I want a little bit of wiggle here. Still a little bit of wiggle room so I can go do the back ones. Now I probably won't be able to get under and film it, but there are three bolts. So I can reach over and hold that on. You kind of just have to blindly get your fingers up in there or from the top, however you can reach it to get those on. There's again a saddle with a big long bolt, and I never bothered touching the ones that are attached actually onto the uh, car body itself. Let's see how I can film this. All right, looking from the driver's side. Right there, there's that little saddle bolt. That one's loose currently, and you can see the, uh, the bracket there. You won't be able to see my fingers, but you might hear me yelling a little bit. There, so you can see my hands moving it. Hello. I'm gonna try to get those three bolts in. I wonder if it would have been easier to have this already attached to the car and then just lined up that middle one. All right, there's one. Oh, I think I found the top one. Just gonna wiggle her with my fingers until she fits. I think it's close. Yes, okay, found some thread. Two turns is good for now. Okay, let's see if I get that last one. That's the hardest one I find. Might add, I'm doing this without gloves and it's minus five outside. I'm feeling a little chilly. Ooh, maybe I can hold it up with some needle nose pliers. Okay, needle nose pliers holding it. Let's see if I get my finger in there and give it a turn or two. Just need 
it's two threads and I know we're good. Ha <laughs> ha, got it. Okay, they all got a thread or two in there. I got a gear wrench <laughs> to try to get in and tighten them up. There we go. Keep doing that till all three are tight. All right, bottom one, tight. Click, click. <laughs> Side one. Top one, I might have to go from the top for that. Let's see. Right there, that last one. There's that saddle bolt that goes in between. I'll have to tighten that. We're almost there. Anybody know any good jokes while I'm waiting? Let's hope that when uh, I've got this part of the job done, there's nothing else too much wrong with this car. Now, while I can't really film it, there's that saddle bolt down there. That one's tight. <laughs> Great thing is about this camera angle. Basically the same angle that uh, anybody who's watching you do one of these projects is. So, you know, third person view or something. So, what is it they say about hindsight? There's that bolt right there. And uh, I could have accessed this just from the driver's side with a big extension there. Anyways, I'll torque that thing up. <laughs> Click, click. <laughs> that would have been way easier. <laughs> All right, there's the front motor mount. I'm gonna do the ones attached to the transmission first. They're all finger tight, the two in the transmission and the two from the bottom. I'll get those tightened up next. Gear wrench from the top. Both of those. Anything moving, and the goal is to never have to uh, loosen these again. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Engine mounts, all three of those done. Side mounts, I think I still need to torque. All right, this piece you could have left that on your tranny when you dropped it, but this is what's going to be holding up my cables there's three bolts that hold that on down there if you took it off I bet you know where they came from there's three of these bolts that hold this on get that attached next so if you see that little electro electrical connector and there's a bolt right there that's where that brackets gonna go right in there there's gonna be three throw one there first so I can kind of feel where she goes there's one. Might get one of these from the bottom if I can reach. We all just fingered in right now. Not tight yet. Let's see if we can reach down to number three there. Yes! Three. I'm gonna do as much of my fingers as I can despite the fact that they're freezing. And then we'll see what kind of tools I can get in there. This is a 12 mil socket for this. At the moment, it's just a thumb and another finger. Tight as I can get it with my fingers. Let's get some tools in there. Try the gear wrench first. Since you can't really get a torque wrench in there, you're just gonna tighten her up until she feels good. One, tight. These bolts, they kind of remind me of Sasquatch. I can't see them, but I know. I feel in my heart that they're there. <laughs> That's one, two, one more to tighten up, buckle my shoe. Three, tight. Okay, there's an electrical connector that you saw there from that other one, little guy right here. I think I'm done down in that area, so I can probably go ahead and plug that one in. Click, click, done. All right, next, two bolts that hold this on. When you press your clutch pedal down, this goes in and out and pushes the clutch fork inside there, and that's where magic happens. I'm sure there's a better way to do this than the way I'm doing it, but uh, pop that little part 
at the end of the piston, and that little rod in there. I'm just gonna push it with my hands. I'm gonna be bleeding this system anyways, eventually. Let's start with this one here. One finger in. Just gotta line up that hole. I think it's in there. Yes, there we go. You can't quite get that gear wrench in there, but I can do one little turn at a time. Pull a little bit more of my fingers, good. One tight. If I kind of put it on an angle, hopefully it'll strip this. I can get a socket in Okay, I don't think that's going anywhere. <laughs> Two of those in. Now, I'm gonna go and press my clutch pedal and let's see if it pushes it back and forth. Alright, next I'm gonna get the starter in. This has two bolts. It goes right there. It goes right there. One bolt from this side and the other bolt from that side. You might be able to vaguely see it right about there, I think. Just kind of pushes into place. One bolt fingered in. Second bolt fingered in, we'll get a wrench, a ratchet on that in a moment. 14 mil socket for that, or wrench. Right, snug, get the other one snug and then we'll torque them. Wouldn't it be funny if the, uh, <laughs> if the ratchet was going the correct direction? Oh, that'd be just great. The long bolt. Yeah. There we go. All right, for your starter, there's two connections. One's just an electrical little plug thing. The other one, that one's gonna just be held on with a little nut and a washer. I'm gonna put the one with the washer on first. Now we'll just use a 12 mil wrench, socket, whatever. Get that on there. So you got that little electric connector. There you go, snap, snap. Boot cover over again. Beauty, starter, done. Before I start attaching cables and mounting them down to where they're supposed to go, I'm going to get my clutch cables next. Get those mounted down in there. There's one that's gonna go there. I'm gonna get those held in. And then there's a bracket that's gonna go here that attaches to this. And that's what's gonna let me change gears. All right, so those two cables there, they get held in with those things. I've labeled one which was right and left, even though they're the exact same. I've just slid that one on the top there, right here. I'm gonna just give it a little hammer down. Need a long extension for that, I think. All right, you see that one's in there now? We're gonna do the one on the left. That one's a little difficult to see, but I'll leave the camera running. Here's the top of it before I uh, hammer it down. It just fits in right there like that. There we go. All right, this piece is going in next. One cable's getting attached up there. This one actually attaches right to the, uh, the shifter. This little piece that goes on top of there. Do not lose this little piece. That's gonna go on there, make contact. So this thing's gonna be able to move around, do what you need it to. i be very careful not to drop this little piece here. Those two bolts need to get tightened. That little square piece just fits under there. That cable right there is gonna to attach to the front. And the other one I've already slid on right there. 
I'm gonna go ahead and slide some of the rest of those things back on. And there's gonna be a retainer washer and a little cotter pin that holds it all in place. The washer, there's a small pin. Washer, pin through the hole. Right. Retaining washer, and here's that little retainer pin. There we go, she's not coming loose anytime soon. go both of those retainers in there I should be able to go actually shift uh, inside the car now all right let's cycle through those first gear second gear Control. Third, fourth gear, fifth gear, reverse, neutral. Now time to start making cables go where they're supposed to and locking them down. Let's start with the easy ones. There's one here for that uh, clutch hydraulic thing. <laughs> just, just follow the hoses and try to remember where you put everything. I'm not gonna completely tighten that one yet. Let me get my second one in. That one's just below the upper rad hose. A lot of these uh, cables just have little clips that just kind of push down on stuff. They'll lock into place. This one is a ground clamp. Looks like it's just connected from the top of the transmission. Ground, top of the transmission right here, right there, and then it goes right onto the body. It's also a little, uh, I think that would be Backup light switch. It's a little indicator that was right off the transmission there. There's a bracket here that I believe just pops right there. Yeah, that'll fit good. That's gonna be supporting this. So I'm gonna put that ground clamp and that all together. That glove does not taste as good as it looks. Basically just picking one thing at a time and reattaching wherever it goes if I'm actually remembering anything. Okay. So the ground, this ground's going from the battery, straight from the battery right onto the transmission. So that one right there, that black ground cable needs to get moved to right there where the ground cable is touching. So if I zoom out, I pretty much just got to move it from there to here, it's just a quick 12 mil. Right down there, that one. And now I just gotta move it back over here. We connect those two together. So that's where that cable's supposed to go. Battery down to the transmission and then that cable ends up going and attaching here to the car body. Same, that same little cable uh, section that's going to the starter. I realize I'm just talking, but this is how I remember what I'm doing. If you took it apart, make sure you took pictures of what you did so that you can put it all back together. I always keep uh, some paper towel or something, rag clogging places where I don't want critters or anything going when I'm not working on the vehicle overnight and stuff. I think it's about time to go grab my airbox. There's three bolts that are gonna be holding the airbox down. One, two, three. Okay, take the airbox apart. Keep those pieces somewhere safe. 
it's a decent air filter. I don't think I need to be replacing that. All right. Finger those in first. That'll be a couple things that are going to get attached onto there. One, two, three. Just checking for anything loose that I can do easily before I get that one on there. Good. Okay. Let's get the air box back on. Air filter. Top of the box to you. It's going to be a plug here on the side. There's a metal clip that just fits down, and that's held on with a 10 mil bolt. And a metal bracket that's going to be fitting down. Let's loosen that first. Careful not to lose any of those little pieces. Don't think I'm torquing that to 100 foot pounds. It is tight. Okay, good. Let's plug that connector in. All right, force that thing on there. Good. We'll loosen that first a bit more. That makes it a lot easier. There's a little uh, mark here to align that with. Go ahead and attach that hose there too. There's a little alignment mark on that. Before I get that completely perfect, I'm gonna get that hose reinstalled into there. It's just kind of press fit. And there's a small groove on the inside to grab that lip. Nice hard plastic. <laughs> there we go. No vacuum leaks today. Ah, tight, good, okay. Let's squeeze everything together. There we go. That's on. Go ahead and tighten up those. No need to break them, they just gotta be tight. Good. Oh my goodness. We're almost done. Okay, battery bracket. Now this may have had four bolts at one point, but I think I only have three. One. That's gonna get lined up. When oh, there's a battery hold down, there's a bracket right here. One, two, three. I'm gonna install the shroud next. And there's two clips, one on each side. These just slide down into. And there's two 10 mil bolts that just fit on the top there. And a plug. Finger tight that one. Finger tight that one. Now I know during this project I've probably been calling things by the incorrect name. When I say engine mount, really I guess it is a transmission mount. There's three transmission mounts. Engine mounts are over here. Whatever. I'm figuring out how to do this, but I do consider myself pretty handy. I think Red Green said that. Engine shroud installed. There's a cable down here. So I'm gonna have to zap strap that on. There we go. Got a zip tie or zap strap. All right, that's not coming loose. <laughs> Snip. Now, fortunately, during this job, I've had the tires off and my brake system has been exposed to the elements, so it's looking like it's got a little bit of rust. I'm gonna clean that up on another day. We're just gonna get this thing together. Um, I'll be replacing the pads. Rotors are just gonna need a nice little skim. I might even go take them to the machine shop and have them just give them a little bit there. But for now, we're gonna um, support this with the jack, pull out those two bolts that's hold the knuckle together, install the CV into the transmission, other end into our hub here, and get that all back together, and then reattach the brakes. I always put anti-seize on any of my brake components and some of this when I know I'm gonna have to be uh, replacing parts every year or two. 
I'm not gonna worry about these ones too much, but it sure made it a lot easier last time. Loose, loose, support the bottom of this. Don't need any undue stress on my control arm as this thing comes down. Just coax that one down a little bit. That end of the seat is going in the transmission. That side, those splines there, goes where the rotor and the hub is. There's a little clip that's right there. That's usually a little tough part to get lined up. So I'm gonna get a little shoulder and push it in. Now I had already replaced the main seal on both sides of these. That's not shown on camera, but that was a nice little, uh, I think like 60 bucks for the two. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in. Let me just get it lined up. I'm gonna be very careful not to pull back to myself if I need to rearrange, because I don't feel like rebuilding the inside of this CV. I'm gonna push, give it a little bit of pressure, maybe even hammer it. The hope is that it just pops right in. Give it a little turn, the spline should be able to line up. Oh, there we go. If I have to hammer it, I want to make sure I put that nut on there so I don't bust those threads. And sometimes you get a hammer on the end will do it or just putting your whole shoulder in. Let's see if I can still film it though. Oh. That's what I should have done in the first place, just smack it in. <laughs> we'll see how easy it goes into the hub. That's how I'll know for sure that it's in. You should put a little bit of grease or lube on the inside of the hub where anything's touching. Kind of angle that in there. And we're pushing up. This should just align. There we go. Beauty. That was no problem. The fact that it went in nice and easy tells me that's a good thing. There we go. I can get rid of that jack. Probably gonna need an alignment after all this. <laughs> a little bit of anti seize on there. A lot of it, I guess. That was my bad. All right, that's a 19 mil. You can also use a uh, three quarter inch. I promise, I'm not that impatient. Maybe a little bit. Let's get the caliper reinstalled here. I might not be able to torque that. Uh, nut on the front here until I get the car dropped because it's going to be able to spin since there's no uh, tension or whatever load on the thing. We're going to worry about making the brakes all shiny another day. This is not a brake video. That's another time. <laughs> we'll hope they work though. <laughs> Make sure your caliper hasn't been twisted, rotated too much or at all. <laughs> click, click. Let's go to the other side and install some stuff. This is the longer CV. Don't know if we'll need a hammer or not. Or just a little, good little heat hoe. I think we're good. Get any debris out of there because this is, again, they've been sitting for a little while. Sprayed with grease or anti seize. Right, the spline's good. There we go. Knuckle. Caliper guide pin, what do you call it? Caliper bolts. Bolts that hold the caliper on. Nothing's twisted out of the ordinary. Might need a little coax in here and there. Now we won't torque those down yet. It's a 30 millimeter, 12 point socket. I don't think it needs to go much tighter than that. I'm joking, we're actually gonna torque that. 
Driver's side. Oh, we're almost ready. It's time to get fluids in the transmission. I got a uh, plug there, I'm gonna open it up. There's another one on the bottom. We're gonna fill that up with a funnel and some 75W90. I'm using a 24 millimeter socket. Should probably make sure the bottom one's tight too before I put this on. All right, if this all goes right, this should be taking two of these. So I'm using 75W90 or you know API GL5 is kind of what it calls for for these uh, specific transmissions. I'm using Lucas because that's what was in stock at the store when I went. They also have Pennzoil and some other brands that I've never heard of. I'm not worried about this one overfilling, but once I get to my second one, I want to have just enough that I can stick my finger in the hole and just feel that little bit of wetness. All right, this is gonna take forever. Let's take off the lid. Yeah, like why would I wait? So I've got that in there pretty good. It's a, uh, that little rubber hose has made a bit of a seal, so I'm not worried about it leaking right now. And I'm just gonna slowly get this thing filled up. This sure is exciting. Ooh, that did get exciting. My funnel almost fell over. We're not even halfway yet. Bottle number two. I'm gonna fill it up until there's maybe that much left in my bottle. And then I'm gonna take the hose out and check it with my finger. Again, terminology is great if you know it. I'm gonna just go <laughs> until this thing works. I had no idea how to do any of this stuff a year ago or when this thing happened. I did not want to pay for my own repairs. So I taught myself. I read some books, watched some videos, read some more books, made some mistakes. We're gonna find out pretty soon if this worked. Okay. There's about, or I can feel it, there's about that much left of fluid. We're gonna wait for all this to drain. Now we're gonna see uh, how full that transmission is. All right, we might get a little drip here. We still got room for more. All right, probably safe to just fill her up. Waste not, want not. All right, I'm sure we're gonna get a little drip when we get this, just from the hose. Let's get the plug back in. Tighten it up. Last step is getting the battery in the car and the wheels on. Okay, battery tray. Battery hold down. It's not moving, good. I'm always very cautious when throwing in the battery. Make sure your grounds and your positive don't touch. That would be a recipe for a disaster. I don't think we have too many other parts missing other than, you know, we've got a cover here, we've got some shrouds for down there. I always throw a little bit of anti seize Again, <laughs> throw anything I don't want. We got some cold winters up here and uh, as you can see, things rust. It's easier if I can take these apart at some point. Need a wheel stuck on here. I know this makes everything sticky when you're working on the car, but I've had enough seized parts that uh, I don't mind doing this little extra step. Save me headache later. These aren't torqued, I'll do that once I drop it. Man, I forgot how low this thing was to the ground. Okay, let's torque up the wheels. Probably gonna need some air in here. And we can also do the axle nut now. Oop. 
that didn't take much. All right, moment of truth. Yeah, I think everything's tightened. Right, we have a major improvement. The transmission doesn't make weird noises during idle. Now it's time to see what happens when we try this. Oh, no tools that I can see. It's gonna need a good wash. I pretty much did this project with tools that I got 20 years ago or so when I graduated high school, or so I say. Wrenches, old. Sockets, had those for a long time. I bought some gear wrenches. I did most of this without power tools. That drill doesn't count. But no air tools, no big fancy hoist. And in my driveway and my basement. I can't wait to take this for a quick drive. There we go. I think I fixed it. That was a 2005 Toyota Corolla. This thing's got over 300,000 kilometers on it. I think it's close to 340. I think we're gonna get a couple more years out of this thing as long as I keep the fluids good. Thank you guys for watching. That was a big adventure, fun project. I've never done something like this before, so that's new for me. Please leave a comment, subscribe, anything. Leave questions. I'll be happy to talk to you guys. Thank you, bye.